a major disaster causes the shuttle to be completely destroyed, leaving the astronaut floating in deep space with no connection to the Earth. There is only one option for her to go back home, by venturing further into space. Six hundred kilometers from Earth, where life is impossible, Matt Kowalski floats freely, thanks to an experimental jet pack around the Space Shuttle Explorer while watching how several colleagues work nearby trying to repair a faulty communications card. While doing his spacewalk, Kowalski tells some of his life stories, about what happened in 1996, when during his first space experience he spent six weeks blowing kisses to his wife every time he passed over Texas, only to find after landing that she had left with a lawyer, so after gathering all the things he left for Tijuana, from where they were in constant contact with them, they remind him that they already knew his story, preventing him from telling another and assuring him that they will miss him before his next retirement, lamenting that he will not be able to beat Anatoly Solovyev's spacewalk record. Sheriff, one of his colleagues, manages to activate the Hubble telescope, being congratulated for it, but Dr. Stone does not manage to get any data to Houston, despite having replaced and restarted the card, without his visual examination serving to detect the problem for which they must examine the communications panel, which must be dismantled, thanking Houston for his patience and collaboration, since the reason for his stay in space is to install a system of his invention in Hubble. Kowalski helps Stone to remove the panel when they receive information that the Russians have launched a missile to destroy one of their old satellites, causing a cloud of debris orbiting 32,000 km per hour even though they are not in its path. While they collaborate, Stone tells Kowalski that she has been preparing for the mission for six months, consisting of placing a scanning system that she devised for hospital use and that it is a prototype that they will use to scan the Earth, telling him that in addition to the magnificent vision of the Earth that they have, what he likes most about being in space is the silence. When Kowalski is about to tell another of his stories, they receive a notice that they must abort the mission and start an emergency evacuation, since the remains of the Soviet satellite caused a chain collision by colliding with other satellites, killing most of them. Whose remains rush towards their position, doing so at such a speed that debris from the destroyed satellites immediately begins to reach them, hitting the explorer and killing Sheriff, while Stone is isolated in the arm of the ship from which she was carrying out her repairs, which will soon be separated from the ship, asking Kowalski to let go so as not to be dragged along with the other wreckage. Finally, she manages to let go, being thrown, and Kowalski also loses visual contact with her, who spins non-stop and without finding any point to be able to indicate her position, also feeling that she is suffocating and cannot breathe, until when she manages to do it again and sees the International Station as a reference, it seems that nobody listens to her, although when the situation seems completely desperate, she again hears the voice of Lieutenant Kowalski, who asks her to turn on his flashlight so that he can see her, thus getting him to come closer, asking her to not breathe so fast, because it consumes too much oxygen with very little left. Kowalski fixes her to him by means of a cable, with which he can drag her, returning together to the shuttle until they carry Sheriff's corpse, which he observes is missing a good part of his face. They observe when they arrive that the damage is catastrophic, despite which they try to see if there is any survivor, verifying that they all died. Lacking communications and with only 5% oxygen, Kowalski informs Stone that his goal is to reach the International Station, once there uses Soyuz ship to return to Earth, having only 90 minutes before the remains of space debris from reaching them again. While they go to it, he tries to calm her down by making her look at the beautiful sunrise, asking her where she lives, she tells him that it is in Illinois, calculating that it must be 8 in the afternoon there, so he asks her what she would be doing there at that time on a normal day, to which she replies that she would be listening to her car radio while driving aimlessly. She tells Kowalski to stop dragging her, because she is becoming a burden on him, though instead, he continues to ask her about her life, telling him that she is not married and that no one is waiting or thinking about her on earth, since she had a daughter, but she slipped while playing in the schoolyard and hit her head, dying when she was only four years old. She was driving when she got the news, and that's what she's been doing ever since when she's not working. He observes that their oxygen is at 1%, although they are only five minutes away from reaching their objective, Kowalski observes that the station was abandoned, missing one of the Soyuz, the other being almost unusable, since he deployed his parachute, despite which they can no longer return because their backpack already has very little fuel left. They finally manage to reach the station, already out of fuel, hitting it against it, losing control, and not being able to hold on to anything. Finally, some cables are wrapped around her leg, managing to avoid moving away from their objective. Kowalski already out of fuel cannot approach her, understanding that he is a burden for her, since he is dragging her with him and if they continue together they will both perish. As Stone refuses to separate from him, 
It will have to be Kowalski himself who decides to do so, seeing how far he drifts away, he continues to give him instructions to find the lock and enter the station. Despite already lacking oxygen, and on the verge of losing consciousness, Stone manages to enter the station, where she removes his diving suit, finally being able to breathe. After touring the ship she verifies that the damage to it is numerous, and as she tries to contact Kowalski through the station's radio, she doesn't get it. She then observes how fire has started in the station and tries to put it out, but only gets hit himself and propelled backward by the force of the fire extinguisher's recoil. As the fire spreads, she gets into the Soyuz, and, shortly before she told Kowalski that every time she piloted the Soyuz in the simulator it crashed, she reads the instructions and starts the undocking and takeoff process, getting the module to undock, then the parachute that holds the module, whose cables are made of steel, makes the ship to return again and again to the station, so it must determine to go outside and unscrew the cables. As she was removing the last cable, another space debris approached again, despite which she manages to release the last anchor and avoid being dragged by the remains of the meteorites, being able after that to head towards the Chinese station. As she checks the fuel bar, she sees that the ship lacks fuel and is unable to move. She tries to seek help through the radio, but the only connection she manages to make is with a foreigner who does not speak English, hearing that she has a dog. As he knows that he does not understand her, he tells her that he knows that she is going to die that very day, asking him to say a prayer for her. Shortly after she hears the man singing a lullaby to his baby, deciding then to close the oxygen intake and surrender to sleep while listening to the distant lullaby. As she begins to lose consciousness, he hears someone calling behind the hatch that she checks is Kowalski, who opens the hatch and enters next to her and sitting next to her, bragging about having pulverized the spacewalking record, toasting with vodka before telling her that they must leave for the Chinese station, which is 160 kilometers away, and her allegations that they cannot do it since they lack fuel and that she already tried everything she could, reminding her that she has the landing rockets. He understands what she was trying to do, and tells her that he know that it is easier for her to close all the systems and forget about the world because in that tiny room no one can harm her, while if she returns she will have to overcome death from her daughter. After that, he encourages her to continue and tells her that it is time to go home. She then wakes up and looks around but doesn't see anyone. After realizing that it was a hallucination due to lack of oxygen, she opens the oxygen ducts again and remembered during her hallucination that re-entry rockets have a separate tank. After studying her instruction book, she manages to separate the three modules of the ship, speaking again with Matt, who asks her to tell her daughter that he is not going to give up and that she is very proud of her. In this way, she manages to approach the station and when her module begins to lose height, she leaves it with a fire extinguisher with which she gradually propels herself towards the station, as the extinguisher is empty, she holds onto a bar of the station, thus reaching the hatch just at the moment in which the space debris reaches it again, observing once inside that it is also very damaged, managing to reach the ship, which, although similar, is not the same as the Soyuz and also all the commands are in Chinese, having to make several attempts before hitting the uncoupling button between the violent ups and downs to which the increasingly numerous space debris subjects them. The space station ends up decomposing due to the impacts, its remains beginning to burn and dissolve as they fall into the atmosphere, its module also being red hot, and some of its pieces detaching, resisting despite everything, when approaching land the parachute deploys slowing her fall to the water while the radio starts working again, hearing from Houston that they detected her presence and that they will come to her rescue. She manages to open the door after touching all the buttons, beginning to seep the water into the module, which begins to sink as a result, managing to get out of it once at the bottom, as the weight of the suit prevents her from propelling herself towards the surface, having to get rid of it to emerge. Once on the surface, she rests floating on his back while observing debris in the sky reaching the atmosphere of the Chinese station. As on the shore, she takes a handful of mud in her hands, happy to be able to touch it again, after which she manages to stand up while staggering forward. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.